Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different aspects of molecular biology in the MOOCs course molecular biology. So, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the uh, cell biology, we have discussed about the structures and functions of the different organelles within the eukaryotic cell. Following that we have also discussed about the different types of biomolecules. So, we have discussed about the DNA, RNA, proteins and then we also discussed very briefly about the enzymes and its properties. Uh, subsequent to that we have also seen that how these molecules are interacting with each other, how these molecules are responsible for the uh, different types of activities within the cell. So, in that we have discussed about the apoptosis, cell divisions and the autophagy. So, uh, subsequent to that we have also discussed about the central dogma of molecular biology. And within the central dogma of molecular biology, we discuss about the replication, transcription and translations. And we have discussed about the, all of these events in the prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic uh, system. We have discussed about how these uh, events are being regulated within the cell with the help of different types of modifications and other kinds of uh, uh, re regulation at the cellular signaling levels and all that. Subsequent to that, we have also discussed about the different types of techniques what is being evolved or what is being developed using the molecular biology principles. And in this series uh, we are uh, in the current module we are discussing about the different types of blotting techniques. So, so far what we have discussed we have discussed about the southern blotting uh, where and the purpose of the southern blotting is to detect the DNA fragment into a genome. And then uh, following that we have also discussed about the northern blotting. So, if you recall in the previous lecture we have discussed about the uh, applications of the northern blotting and how the northern blotting is being performed. So, when you want to perform the northern blotting you are supposed to first isolate the uh, total messenger RNA from the cell and then it has to be separated onto a denaturating agarose gel and following that we have also discussed about the transferring of these RNA molecules onto the nitrocellulose membrane following that it you have to hybridize that with the suitable radioactive probe and then you have to develop that with the help of the uh, autoradiogram and then sub, uh, at the end you are going to get the pattern and this pattern is actually going to tell you about the transcriptional activity of that particular gene fragment and it is going to tell you how it is modulating in the different types of response. Now, in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the another technique which is called as the western blotting and the purpose of the western blotting is to detect the proteins onto uh, the uh, into, into the cell lysate or into the cellular system and uh, protein detection of protein is very important because it is going to give you the idea about the translational activity of that particular uh, uh, gene or gene product and uh, the, the detection of western blotting or detection of protein with the help of western blotting is a multi step process where initially you are going to run the uh, you are going to separate the proteins onto uh, 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 onto a SDS page uh, following that you are supposed to transfer that onto a nitrocellulose membrane and then you are supposed to treat that with the primary antibody followed by the secondary antibody and then followed by the development of the depending upon the secondary antibody are supposed to use the suitable uh, substrate to give you the band. Okay. So, what you are going to see here is that you are going to first run the, uh, the so this is the step number 1 that you are going to run the uh, proteins onto a, uh, onto a SDS page. Then you are going to transfer that onto a nitrocellulose membrane and then you are going to do, so this is the step number 2 and then you are going to do a blocking step followed by the primary and uh, after the primary the you are going to have a blocking, uh, you are going to have a washing step so that the excess antibody can be removed and then uh, so this is going to be the step number 3, this is going to be step number 4 and then you are going to have the. Uh, secondary antibody followed by the washing and then you are going to add the substrate or the different types of reagents what is required for developing 
and then it is actually going to give you a band corresponding to that particular protein. So, what you see here is that it is mainly having the 5 different steps. Step number 1 you are going to resolve the protein mixture on to on SDS page. In step 2 you are going to transfer the protein band on nitrocellulose membrane just like as we have discussed about the southern as well as northern blotting. Step 3 you are going to treat this uh, with primary antibody. Step 4 you are going to do a uh, washing and you are going to treat that with the secondary antibody and in the step 5 you are going to do a washing and you are going to develop that with the help of develop by the uh, substrate or you if some cases you are using the radioactivity then you are going to use the arteriogram. So, if you see the technique uh, you can be able to very clearly see that it can be divided into two parts. One part where you are going to run the protein onto a SDS page and then you are actually going to do the subsequent steps by after transferring the protein band onto the nitrocellulose membrane. So, just for the convenience of understanding this we are first going to discuss about the protein uh, which resolution resolving of the protein mixture onto the SDS page following that we are also going to discuss about the all these steps in a subsequent uh, lecture. So, the western blot is uh, western blotting is a popular technique to detect the specific protein present into the crude lysate or the homogenate. It uses the separation of the protein uh, different proteins into the gel electrophoresis which is called as the SDS page and then the transfer of the protein onto a solid support such as nitrocellulose membrane. A primary antibody direct against the protein of interest and the secondary antibody is used to detect the primary antibody and give either colored or the chemiluminescent substrate. So, um, what we are going to do is we are going to first understand. So, it is actually having the two part one you are going to understand about the electrophoresis. So, that you can be able to understand how the you can be able to separate the uh, so protein runs on the SDS page. So, how you can be able to separate the protein onto a SDS page and the second part is the transfer of protein band and following by the subsequent treatments. So, that anyway we have discussed right. So, let us first discuss about the electrophoresis and we are not going to uh, discuss in detail about the electrophoresis we are only going to tell you about how to perform the electrophoresis and then we can use that technique to tell you about how to perform the electrophoresis and how to perform the SDS page. So, that it will become a complete, uh, complete learning experience. So, what is electrophoresis? Electrophoresis is that you are going to run a charged particle into a electric field. So, you can imagine that if you have a charged particle with Q then uh, it is actually going to have it, this process is called as the electrophoresis. So, electrophoresis is an electrokinetic process which separates the charged particle in a fluid uh, using a field of electric charge. It is most often used in the life science to separate the protein molecules or the DNA molecule and can be achieved through the several different procedures depending upon the size and the type and size of the molecule. So, you can imagine that if you have a charge Q which is being uh, resolved and it is. Uh, so, it is actually going to experience uh, electric field or electric charge which is electric force which is called as F is equal to Q e and it is also going to experience a retardation forces and these retardation forces are going to be dependent on to the uh, radius of this particular molecule and as well as the viscosity of this particular media. 
and that uh, friction process is going to be called as 6 pi uh, nita r v and where this molecule is going to stop the place where the uh, f is always good equal to the uh, friction forces and at that point the uh, the electrophoretic mobility is going to be proportional to the z e by the 6 pi nita r. So, z e is actually and so if you if you subsequent if you further simplify this what you will see is that the electrophoretic mobility is directly proportional to the e by uh, e by r actually and and that means it is actually going to be proportional to the uh, charge by mass because r is directly proportional to the m because for most of the spherical molecules r is proportional to the m and uh, e is proportional to the charge ok. So, it is going to be z e is the charge actually. So, hence the electrophoretic mobility uh, v is directly proportional to the charge and the inversely proportional to the viscosity of the media size and the shape of the molecule. In case of relative mobility it is directly proportional to the charge by radius of the molecule for a globular protein the radius of the molecule is related to the molecular mass of the molecule and that is why the relative electrophoretic mobility is charged by mass. So, you can actually be able to run the electrophoresis in two different mode. The mode in which the charge and mass both are actually going to be intact and that mode is called as the native page. Uh, other mode is that you if you if you neutralize the charge what is present onto the protein and then it is going to be called as the SDS page and uh, the difference between the SDS page and the native page is that in the native page the electrophoretic mobility is directly proportional to the charge by mass whereas the electrophoretic mobility in the case of SDS page is going to be inversely proportional to the mass because you have already you have already nullified the charge. So, this is very very important because it is actually going to separate out the molecule based on the mass and that is how you can be able to very precisely predict the mass of that particular protein if you look at the pattern. So, uh, what we are discussing in this is uh, about the SGS page we are not discussing about the native page because the most of the uh, western blotting uh, uh, procedures does not involve the running of the native page. Now, what are the things you required for running the electrophoresis? So, you require the following components, you require the gel cassette, you require the electrophoretic chamber, you require the cords, you require the power pack or the, 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 the instrument which actually can supply the requisite uh, power supply. Then you also require the electrophoretic tank and then you also require the comb so that you can be able to prepare the wells. What are the chemicals you require? So, you require the different types of reagents in preparing the gel electrophoresis. So, you require the buffers and reagent for the electrophoresis. You require the NN, NN tetramethyl ethylene diamine which is also in short form it is called as timid. So, it catalyzes the acrylamide polymerizations then you require the ammonium bar sulfate or APS it is an initiator for the acrylamide polymerizations. Then you also require the TRIS SCL so it is the component of the running and the gel casting buffers then you require the glycine and it is the component of the running buffer Then you require the bromophenol blue and it is the tracking dye to monitor the progression of the gel electrophoresis then you require the comacibillion blue R250 it is used to stain the acrylamide gel and you require the SDS or sodium dodecyl sulfate. It is used to denature and provide negative charge to the protein and then also require the acrylamide and acrylamide is a monomeric unit to prepare the gel. So, you always have the combination of the acrylamide and the bisacrylamide and you also require the bisacrylamide and that is the cross linker for the polymerization of acrylamide monomer to the form gel. How the bisacrylamide and acrylamide come together and form the uh, in network or the mesh so that you can be able to have the uh, retard uh, you, you can you are going to have the frictions and that actually is been responsible for the separation of the different molecules. So, you are going to have the acrylamide polymerization there is a complete mechanism in which the acrylamide uh, is and uh, bisacrylamide is actually going to be mixed up with the timid and APS and that is how it is actually going to make the cross link 
uh, the, so the bisiclamide uh, monomers are actually going to make the crosslink uh, these fibers and that is how it is actually going to make a network. So, ammonium bersulfate in the presence of timid form the oxygen free radicals and induce the polymerization of acclamide monomer to form a linear polymer. These linear polymers are interconnect, interconnected or connected by the cross linking with the uh, bisaclamide monomer to form the 3D mesh with the pores. The size of the pore is controlled by the concentration of the acclamide and the amount of bisaclamide in the gel. In a vertical gel electrophoresis system, we cast two different types of gel, stacking gel and the resolving gel. First, the resolving gel solution is prepared and poured into the gel cassette for polymerization. A thin layer of organic solvent is attached or layered to the stop the entry of oxygen and, uh, and uh, this is being done so that you can actually be about avoid the entry of oxygen and as well as to make the uh, top surface smooth. Oxygen is actually a uh, inhibitor of the free radicals and if you allow the oxygen entry then it is actually going to destroy or it is actually going to inhibit the acclamide polymerization. So, it is actually going to inhibit the acclamide cross linking or polymerization because acclamide polymerization is associated with the uh, free radical formation and that can be stopped. After the polymerization of the resolving gel, a stacking gel is poured and the comb is fitted into the gel for construction of the different lanes for the samples. How you are going to run the gel electrophoresis? So, in gel electrophoresis you are going to have the two different types of gels, you are going to have the resolving gel and you are going to have a stacking gel. The purpose of both the gels are very different. The stacking gel is required for the stacking of the sample whereas, the resolving gel is required for the separation of the molecules. So, first the resolving gel is prepared and poured into the gel cassette for polymerization and thin layer of organic solvent is layered and all that and then you are actually going to have the, uh, uh, the pouring of the stacking gel. So, there is a recipe available through which you can be able to prepare the solution for the resolving and as well as the stacking gels and uh, these are the different components what is required for running the electrophoresis system. Now, the question comes how the stacking gel and what is the relevance of the stacking gel into the gel electrophoresis. So, uh, the sample is prepared in the loading die containing the SDS beta mercaptoethanol in glycerol to denature the sample and preference of the glycerol loading. So, you can imagine that you have a well and in which the samples are filled like this. Okay? So, if you fill the sample like this, some samples are going to be present here and some samples are going to be present here. Like just like in a in a race right some uh, some uh, runners are present here and another runner is present here so there is a difference between these two runners and that's why you see very clearly that this runner is actually stand uh, running in a in a in a circle which is of a larger larger diameter whereas this guy is uh, running in a smaller diameter this means the distance what they are going to run is actually be the same so, same is the concept when you are want to do the stacking because you, what you have is you have a well and this well is standing like this right. So, you are actually going to have a sample here and you are going to have a sample here. This means these two guys are even if they are of similar molecular weight they are separated from each other to this distance and that is why if you if you do not uh, do the stacking the this guy which is like the number 1 and this guy is number P right number one guy is always going to be remain on the behind side. So, number one will come here and the P will come here right because even if they are of the same molecular weight this means you are supposed to devise a mechanism. So, that the one is also going to come here and then the one and P also should come together and they will run together. So, that they are actually going to show you the real separation and real separation would depend on to the molecular weight. So, as the samples are filled vertically there is a distance drift between the molecule at the top versus the bottom lane and the problem is taken care of once the problem runs to the stacking gel. So, stacking is uh, and that is why you are actually going to have a specific composition of the stacking gel. So, what is the composition of a stacking gel? In the stacking gel what you are having is they are actually going to have the this SCL of pH 6.8 and that is a very very important to take care of this problem. Okay. 
So, uh, what you are going to do is uh, the problem is being taken care once the sample runs to the stacking gel. The pH of the stacking gel is 6.8 uh, and this pH the glycine is moving slowly in the front whereas the test glycine is moving fast. As a result the sample get sandwiched between the glycine trays and get stacked in the form of a thin band. As the sample enters the resolving gel with the pH 8.8 .8, the glycine is now charged it moves fast and now sample run as well as their molecular weight. After tracking dye reaches to the bottom of the gel, a gel is taken out from the glass plate with the help of the spatula and it is stained with the Kumasi billion blue R250, the dull dye present onto the gel. So, this is what is actually going to happen. So, this is actually going to be the well, right? And uh, you are going to have the sample which is on the top, right? And you are also going to have a sample at the bottom, right? So, this is uh, and you are actually going to have a pH of 6.8 in the stacking gel. Okay? So, at pH 6.8 the glycine which is also been uh, present in the running buffer is actually going to work as a block. So, it is not going to allow these molecules to run beyond this. Okay? And on the top you are actually going to have a uh, tris tris ions okay? and these tris ions are actually going to run from the top. So, this is actually going to put a pressure onto these molecules and that is how it they will come they will they are free to move, but these guys are not free to move because there is a block there is a glycine block at the at the front right. And as a result what will happen is that when they are running they are actually going to come closer 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 like that and and at the end what will happen is that they all will be at one place they all will be at one place and this is going to be called as the stacking and as soon as this is been done you are actually going to have the resolving gel so this is going to be a resolving gel and they will enter into the resolving gel and then the resolving gel has a pH 8.8 .8. so once the pH 8.8 .8 is there this glycine block is actually going to be removed and then the molecule will run as per their molecular weight. So, they are actually going to be and then the V is inversely proportional to the 1 by m okay? and that is how the larger molecule will run slower and the smaller molecule will run faster. right? So, uh, just to uh, and then uh, uh, once you are done with the uh, once and how run how long the gel is running for that purpose you are actually adding a tracking dye which is uh, and then the tra when the tracking dye is going to reach at the bottom of the gel then you can actually be able to remove this particular thing and then you can if you are doing the western blotting then you can just keep it uh, as such but if you are doing it for the just for to looking at the pattern and then you can actually be able to stain it with the Kumasi billion blue and uh, that is how you are going to get the pattern. So, you are going to see a pattern of the proteins after the standing. Okay? Uh, so, just to explain you all these steps and how to, to make you familiarize with the whole process we have prepared a demo video where we have taken we have uh, shown you how to assemble the cassettes, how to cast the resolving gel, how to cast the stacking gel and so on and it will help you to understand the whole process. Hi everyone, myself Suram Banesh research scholar at Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering at IIT Guwahati. In this video, we will demonstrate you how to run a SDS page gel, and how to prepare various reagents required for the running of SDS page gel and what are the different uh, instruments we can use. So, here this is the gel casting stand. So, where we can use this glass plates to prepare the gel. In between there is a space where we can pour our gel, gel solution. Then we will keep for some time at least 20 to 30 minutes. Let it solidify. Then we will prepare uh, stacking gel then we will load the our uh, protein solution. So, here before doing that we need some reagents. So, what are those reagents? The first reagent we need for this experiment is 
acrylamide. So generally we will prepare acrylamide 30 percentage. 30 percentage means 29 grams of acrylamide and 1 gram of bisacrylamide. This both we can use 29 is 1 ratio in 100 ml of water to get 30 percentage of acrylamide. So both these are neurotoxic. So we have to wear gloves always. After this, we have to prepare resolving gel. For resolving gel, we need 1.5 molar Tris HCl pH 8.8. In addition to that, we also need 10% SDS prepared in double distilled water and also 10% ammonium persulfate and also timid. The role of the ammonium persulfate and timid we can see during preparation of gel. They act as a catalyst. After solidifying we have to use, we have to prepare uh, stocking gel. So stocking gel is nothing but composition is same but we can say it is a diluted. It contains pH 6.8 Tris HCl and remaining components same but in less quantities. So after uh, preparing the gel, we will load the marker and the protein which is denatured at 100 degrees Celsius for 3 minutes. After that, we will fix this gel into this one, we will keep keeping this reservoir, then we will run, we will connect to the power pack and run the gel. So this is the overall introduction of how to uh, prepare a SDS pair gel. So let's start the preparing gel, we will learn more things while preparing the gel. Before preparing the uh, resolving gel, we have to prepare the casting, uh, set up the casting gel. So this is the glass plates. This is a very thin one. So this is the main glass plate. This is 1.5 mm glass plate. Uh, it is available in 1 mm glass plates also. If you are uh, loading solution is less like uh, you want to load only 20 microliter 30 microliter then 1 mm gel is good enough but if you have extended volumes like uh, 70 microliter you can use 1.5 mm gel you have to arrange like this sharp plates on this plate and the bottoms should be uh, equal then we have to put in this one, this tray. then we are going to keep like this. So we have to check if we perfectly set up this one then there should not be any leakage but if there is any leakage your resolving gel may leak out and you will get nothing. So in that case we have to check it uh, prior to pouring the gel so whether uh, uh, it is okay or not. So I am going to use milk water. So just after checking the gel if there are any leakages or not so we moved forward uh, for preparing a reserving gel so the composition is given in this slide 
please go through that slide. This is just water. First, I used water. Uh, I am going to add sequentially 4 ml of water. Now, I have to add 3.3 ml of already prepared 30% acrylamide. Already in introduction, uh, I explained how much percentage we have to prepare and how much quantities of acrylamide and bisacrylamide need to take. So here uh, we have to add 3.3 ml of acrylamide solution, 30 percentage. So I have to adjust 300 microliter. The next component is 1.5 molar tris pH 8.8. We have to add 2.5 ml. Next component is SDS. Here, SDS uh, functions as uh, plays as dual role. Like one thing is that it gives negative charge, gross negative charge on the polypeptide chain. The next component we have to add is uh, SDS. Ten percent is SDS. We have to add hundred microliter of SDS to resolving gel. It plays very crucial role in uh, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Like it imparts negative charge on the polypeptide chain so that uh, despite of their charge, they will move based on the molecular weight. So I am going to add FPS. The other important thing is that 10 percentage ammonium persulfate. Ammonium persulfate, which is catalyzed by the timid, provides uh, free radical species which accelerate the uh, forming mesh like mesh like shape in uh, acrylamide gel. Like it will catalyze forming the mesh. So this is the 10 percentage APS. I just add 100 microliter of 10 percentage APS to resolving gel. In final step, we have to add timid. Timid after finishing, after adding all the components at the end of the gel, we have to add timid because if you add earlier, it will quickly uh, facilitate the uh, polymerization so you cannot take uh, take out with the pipette so it, it complete it completely solidifies so that's why you have to add at the end of the solvent so I, I'm gonna add uh, 5 microliter of uh, this timid which uh, catalyzes the ammonium persulfate ammonium persulfate in turn provides uh, free radical species and free radical species accelerate the polymerization. This is the overall principle of this resolving gel. So I will add limit.
we have to mix properly then add slowly at one corner so So after this we have to overlay with on the top layer we have to overlay with some solvent like uh, 2-butanol or isopropanol or with water. So why we are doing this because if the gel is exposed to air then the oxygen from the air will interfere in the polymerization of the gel. So we have to add either water or 2-butanol for this purpose. Now, we have to check whether it is solidified or not. So it is solidified. Now we have to remove uh, the overlay layer like we have used uh, uh, water. So no need to remove. If you are using isopropanol or butanol, you have to remove that and wash with the milky water. So now we will start preparing the uh, stacking gel. The compositions are given in the video. You have to add 3.4 ml of uh, water first. Next, 830 microliter of acrylamide. Six thirty microliter of three uh, HCl pH six point eight. Fifty microliter of timid and fifty microliter of SDS we have to add. At the end we have to add five microliter of timid. Uh, 
we have to mix properly after adding the timid. Then you just add that one corner. Next we will keep calm. Now we will wait until the gel guard solidified, then we will shift to the buffer tank and then we will run the gel. While the stocking gel is solidifying, we have to prepare uh, sample for loading the uh, loading in STS plane gel. So for that we have to prepare uh, loading die 10x or 6x loading die. It mainly contains 250 millimole of uh, millimolar tris pH 6.8, 30 percentage uh, glycerol, 10 percentage USDS and 0.05 percentage of uh, bromopinal blue. So here uh, we can add 10 millimole of DTT also as a reducing agent. Uh, SDS mainly works as imparting uh, negative charge on the polypeptide chain and DTT breaks down the disulfide parts. If you have a dimer which is uh, which you can see as a monomer in uh, SDS page, suppose you have uh, 20 kda 20 kda that means 40 kda protein which is a dimer actually you can see only 20 kda band corresponding to that protein because uh, dtt breaks down the disulfide band and you can see only single band if you want to see actual molecular weight you have to run it on native phase where there is no reducing agent or no detergent the other thing is uh, glycerol while loading the gel, uh, since the protein solution is not that much dense, it may come out from well. So in order to prevent this thing, we have to load with the denser uh, uh, solution like uh, glycerol. So 30 to 50 percent glycerol is sufficient for uh, keeping the protein solution intact in the bottom of the well. So other thing, uh, bromophenol blue, bromophenol blue we use uh, for just uh, tracking the how much gel completed. So this is the loading time. So we have to take the protein solution. Uh, here we already prepared a 10 percentage of loading dye. So that means uh, this is 10x loading dye. We have to prepare 1x to mix with the protein solution. So this is 100 ml of uh, solution, which uh, loading solution. We mix 10 microliter of loading type to this protein solution. You can tap down or pipe at this protein solution. Then we have to heat it for three minutes at 100 degrees Celsius, so that the all the polypeptide chains, uh, I mean, uh, dimers are, if any uh, multimers are present, they will break down, and we can see nice band. So I am going to heat this at 100 degrees Celsius for three minutes. This is the remaining of uh, stacking gel solution. So we can see it is solidified. So that means the stacking gel also got solidified. We have to remove that gel and uh, fix it into this uh, this one, and we have to keep inside the tank. So I just take out the gel.
so in uh, inside this tank we only have this side only you have to cover uh, other side also so for that we use a dummy plate you just hold it tight and close this thing after that gradually adjust the gel length so just we have to fix like this once fixing here we have to add this uh, running buffer the running buffer contains 15 grams of trace 72 grams of glycine and 5 grams of SDS for 2 liters of solution 1x solution so this is 1x I already prepared I am going to add we added in this tank but the main tank surrounding to this one we have to add up to the mark so for reference you can see here uh, for 4 gels we have to add till here the buffer we have to load outside this uh, gel so for 2 gels here uh, for one gel we can add like this this is the power pack where we can adjust the how many volts we want to run uh, the protein samples are ready we heated sufficient time now we have to load this so we have to remove the comb carefully Then first I am going to load marker or protein ladder. Next I will load sap. Once the loading goes over, we have to fix I am going to set it at 100 uh, 70 volts then As we can see, uh, the, it is almost over, so we can take out the gel, then we will stain and de stain it. Generally what we will do is, we will, uh, there are two ways of staining and de staining process. One is we can do quick staining, like we have to heat it with the staining solution which contains Kumasi Brilliant Blue and uh, along with uh, methanol and water so then we will try to distain with the uh, water uh, by heat but in another way the simplest simplest way is we will just uh, uh, stain the gel for 2 hours then we will distain overnight so I am going to show uh, the simplest way first we will stain 
in Kumasi Brilliant Blue Staining Solution, then we will destain in methanol water containing uh, salt. So, I am going to stop the uh, children, then I will remove it. I will show you how to remove the gel. Take out the plastics. Here we have to be very careful while taking out gel, otherwise, the shard plates may grow. On a corner, we have to take and lift the gel like this. So keep the gel in a staining box. is more or less a plastic one but it can sustain the so then I'm going to add staining solution I will keep it for a uh, rotation for on a shaker for at least two hours, then we will uh, destain or So once the time is over, after 2 hours, we will destain this solution. Now uh, we kept 2 hours in staining solution, uh, we, as we can see the staining is uh, over, like we can see the gel completely turned into blue. So we remove the solution. Then I am going to add destaining solution. And I will keep this on a rocker for 2 hours for destaining. So the composition contains uh, for 100 ml of uh, destaining solution, uh, 40 ml of water, double distilled water, and 40 ml of methanol, and uh, 10 ml of. Uh, so I am going to keep uh, this on a rocker. We have run the gel and uh, stained, uh, stained and uh, destained. Now we will capture the uh, gel image. So we can see manually also, but uh, for record purpose we have to capture it through gel dark. So this is the gel dark uh, imaging system from BioRad. So I will show you how to uh, take the capture the images. So let So here uh, we will use uh, white tray. There is another one uh, uh, grey or uh, uh, UV tray is also there. So there uh, you can see any fluorescent one or uh, stained with the ethidium bromide or blots, chemiluminescent blots you can use that. But uh, for uh, normal protein imaging 
we can use uh, this white ray. So I am going to keep the gel on this one. This is very important step, you have to align the uh, tray in a proper way, so otherwise it will show error. So once it is over, you just push it back. So we have to log on to account. So this is a uh, SDS gel. You can select the application, whatever you want. So here nucleic acids protein gels bloods three different uh, categories are there so we are observing here protein gels protein gels stained with the kumasi blue or white tray we are using white tray so this is the right tray you can use kumasi blue stained one uh, gray tray also but uh, we are using as we are using white tray so we will use kumasi blue so auto optimal then i will ask for capture So it will take uh, one to three minutes based on the signal intensity. So as we can see, it is optimizing the uh, signal intensity. You can minimize this one also so that you can see the gel image. So now it is over. If you want to do any modifications to image, for suppose you want to decrease or increase the signal intensity. So this kind of uh, changes you can do. So if you want to send this gel, you can have send and save. If you have any uh, drive connected to this one, you can send directly to this one, uh, that thing. So for image analysis part, uh, we'll show in the upcoming video uh, how to analyze the what this band of interest correspond to which molecular weight. So we already loaded the molecular weight one so we can easily find out using image lab uh, software. In this video uh, we have learned that uh, how to prepare a SDS page gel and uh, how to run it, what are the precautions need to be taken while uh, preparing the gel and uh, how to observe, how to record the gel using uh, uh, gel documentation system. So I hope uh, this will give you uh, this will give you a gist of how to uh, prepare and run a SDS page gel and analyze the protein sample. So this is the part one of the Western blotting where we have discussed about the uh, how to resolve the sample onto the SDS page. And uh, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the basic principle of the electrophoresis, we have discussed about the different component what is required for the running the electrophoresis and then we also taken the uh, crucial mechanistic and as well as the uh, technical steps what is required for running the SDS page and at the end we have also shown you a demo video how to prepare the uh, how to prepare how to cast the gels how to run the gel and how to stain the gels so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspects related to western blotting thank you mm -hmm.